Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Richard Drinkwater from SV Tech. I'm responsible for the marketing, the PR and the business development within the business. And in light of the cancellation of the shows at Harrogate and Peterborough, where I was meant to be giving this uh, publicly, we've decided to record it and make it available online for our customers uh, and anybody else who might be interested. Um, so bear with me. Payload, essentially, what is it? Where did it come from? And more importantly for most of you, where did it all go? Put simply, payload is the amount of cargo and people that a vehicle can carry. That's legally carry, not physically carry. Um, in the UK, it's measured in kilograms. Where did it come from? Well, the manufacturers define payload under BSEN 1646-2 states that it's the maximum technical permitted laden mass minus the mass in running order that equals a user payload. Now, this information has to be stated in the user's handbook, but you need to take note that there is either a three or five percent plus or my, minus margin of error. That means that if the vehicle booklet says that the vehicle weighs 3000 kilos empty, if you apply the 5% margin of error, it could actually weigh 3,150. So before you've even started, you've lost 150 kilos out of your payload. It's worthwhile noting what it says in the user's handbook. Where did it go then? Well, obviously your gas, your water, your fuel, a driver, the ideal weight is stipulated by the uh, ministry at 75 kilos. I don't know many people uh, over the age of 40 who are 75 kilos or less. Um, what you have left after those things is your payload. So that means your personal possessions, your additional passengers, your food, your food, your cases of wine, many cases of wine in some cases, your bikes and bike racks, etc. After all of that's gone in, are you still legal? I suspect quite a lot of people don't know. There are so many terms used, uh, it's confusing. And, and, and I can understand then in some cases why people do overload because they don't understand some of the terms. I'll try and make it easier for you. The weights described by the manufacturer can be maximum technical permitted laden mass, mass in running order, and maximum technical permitted combined weight. I can hardly say it, let alone understand it. Um, the weights on the plate on the vehicle often don't resemble those manufacturers terms. It's really important that you marry up the two. Um, in England, we deal with gross vehicle weights and gross train weights. In the States, they often use gross vehicle mass, gross train mass. Essentially, in this country, the maximum technical permitted laden mass equals the gross vehicle weight, which is on the VIN plate and on the V5. So in this country, we always work on gross vehicle weight and gross train weights. Don't confuse gross train weight with gross vehicle weight on the plate because there's normally about a two ton difference <laughs> and that could lead to some problems. The gross train weight is essentially the combination weight of the vehicle and anything that you're towing behind it. So why is it so important to understand your payloads? Well, most importantly, it's safety. You need to avoid overloading or stressing the components of the vehicle. That's the running gear, the suspension, the brakes. And it's very easy to do. We often see people overloaded in vehicles um, that take an extra 150, 200 foot to stop um, because they're overloaded. We've all been in cars or vans that we've stuck loads of stuff in and then it's taken us quite a long time to stop uh, and it can be quite surprising. Um, in a motorhome, it's even more important. Obviously, there's a legal aspect of it as well. Um, you're not allowed to overload vehicles. Um, it's against the law. Uh, the police and the DVSA are carrying out roadside checks all of the time. If they suspect you for being overloaded, they will pull you and they will weigh you at the side of the road. Um, and we have seen some very shocking figures over the last five years as to the conversion rates from people that they pull over to the people who are actually uh, overloaded and I'll go into those a little bit later. The manufacturer's payload allowances are very often not realistic for your needs um, and therefore the payload available is critical when it comes to choosing your motorhome and purchasing extra kit and supplies. It's really really important when you do buy your motorhome that you tell 
whoever you're buying it off, what you're going to be using it for. Um, don't say it's just for me and the wife when you're going to be sticking in the kids, the grandkids and the dog, because you're inv invariably going to be in the wrong vehicle for your needs. What you need to remember is that the Road Traffic Act requires vehicle users to ensure that their vehicles are not overloaded. If a vehicle is found to be overloaded, the driver could be prosecuted and cautioned. Uh, there are fines of up to £5,000 for each offence. So that means a fine for each overloaded axle and any overloading on the total weight. I have seen occasions when I've weighed people off, they've been overweight on their front axle, the rear axle, the main, the overall weight, and they've got the wrong tyres on for the overloaded weight that they're at, which means that's four offences. In the eyes of the law, that could be very, very, very expensive. Mostly what the police and the DVSA are looking for are dangerous overloads. Um, a driver can face a charge of dangerous driving, which carries a maximum term of two years in prison. And if a vehicle is overloaded and results in someone being killed because you couldn't stop in time, the driver could face going to prison for manslaughter or death by dangerous driving. We have actually seen a case of this in the not too distant past and it was horrific. I wouldn't want anyone to go through this, but I do think it is only a matter of time before there is a very high profile case along these sort of lines. Um, other considerations. Your insurance could be invalidated if you're involved in an accident. Um, accident investigators will be on the scene pretty quick smart. And as you know, as we all know, insurance, the whole point about insurance is trying not to pay out. Um, you don't want to fall on the wrong side of that. So bear in mind also, if you're driving in Europe and you're stopped by the police and found to be overloaded, you'll be handed an immediate fine payable on the spot and you'll have to remove some of your goods before you can continue on your journey. I did hear of a case a couple of years ago whereby a chap was pulled in France by a gendarme. He was uh, around about 150 kilos overweight. Uh, they made him offload some stuff and put it by the side of the road while he drove down uh, a little bit further to the campsite that he was staying at. And when he came back to pick up his stuff, they did him for littering. So <laughs> bear in mind, you don't want to fall foul of the French or the Spanish police if you're overloaded um, because they will find you. Um, the overload offences in this country, well, the fines are up to £5,000 per offence. But in, real, in reality, this doesn't happen. Um, the severity of the overload depends upon uh, the amount that you pay. So from 0% up to but not including 10%, uh, it's a £100 fine, a fixed penalty. Uh, from 10% but not up to and not including 15%, it's £200. 15% and over, £300. And above 30%, uh, there are road safety concerns or there are road safety concerns, then it will uh, result in a court summons. Uh, some people say to me, oh, well, DVSA examiners and the police, don't they allow you a 5% uh, tolerance uh, before they issue with a fixed penalty or prohibition notice? Um, well, it all is dependent upon the guy on the day and what his frame of mind is. He doesn't have to give you that 5%. He can do, but he doesn't have to. So don't use that as your defence and don't plead ignorance, because as we all know, ignorance isn't an excuse in the eyes of the law. Um, in terms of enforcement, over the past six years, the DVSA are recording an ever increasing amount of overloaded vehicles on the road. In 2015, of the light commercial vehicles that were pulled over suspected of being overloaded, and there were 488,000 of them, over 88% of those were in fact overweight. I'll just let that sink in for a moment. 88% of 488,000 were overweight. Now, now, light commercial vehicles includes vans, motorhomes, minibuses, lightweight horse boxes, um, but that's a rel it really is irrelevant. They're absolutely on the case of this and so much so that we now have weighing motion sensors within the UK road network, which means your vehicle can be weighed at 60 or 70 miles an hour. Um, that's a total weight of the vehicle. And a few miles further on, the DVSA offices have a copy of your V5 with your GVW mm -hmm. and the amount that you're overweight. And they're waiting to pull you in and weigh you off and do split weights and hand you a fine. Um, it's very, very easy to do. And if you doubt me, have a look at these images. Uh, this is from the M1. I can't tell you exactly where it is because I don't know. Um, if you look at the road, the picture at the top, you will see people coming down the motorway. Uh, on the right hand side, there's these three little boxes. Well, they're the weighing equipment. And if you look at the road, um, there are little patches within the road that have got the weigh pads in. This is when they're, where they've been put in. Um, 
Now, we had a set, we had a, a an enforcement officer come and sit with us at the Lincoln show and he showed me the computer program. It is literally as easy as this. He pulls up on the bridge, he opens his laptop, he wirelessly connects to the weighing equipment down here. As you come down the road, the cameras on top of the bridge, which are connected to the automatic number plate recognition system, pull up your revenue weight. And as you go over the pads, if you're over that weight, it goes flashes red. He presses a button and three miles down the road, his very happy mate pulls you in and will then carry out a full weighing uh, session with you and probably hand you uh, a rather large slap on the wrist or more likely a fine. Um, you wouldn't even notice these things when you're driving down the road. We believe that there are, the plans are to have about 20 of these, and we think there are about 16 operational at the moment. And they are on the M1, the M6, the M25, the M11, um, M62. Anywhere there's a smart motorway now, there are weight bridges. So what do you need to do? You need to check the logbook weights. You need to check that your logbook matches the plates on the vehicle. This is first and foremost. Uh, you have your V5 from the government and on there it has a revenue weight, which is your gross vehicle weight or your MTPLM, as we discussed earlier on. Um, it's your gross vehicle weight. If you check the taxation class, first of all, it says private light goods. Well, that's a motorhome up to three and a half tons. Uh, a motorhome over three and a half tons will come in as a private HGV. And conversely, the tax is £100 a year less for being over three and a half tons. Go figure. So you need to have a look at that V5. And then you need to check the plates on the vehicle. You need to be sure to check the correct plate and the correct detail. If you look at these, these, are, these plates are both off the same vehicle. If you look on the left of the Fiat-based manufacturer's plate, it says three and a half tons, the gross vehicle weight. But if you look at the Swift plate on the right-hand side, you'll see that the gross vehicle weight is now has been uprated by the motor manufacturer to 3850. Um, and, uh, he obviously will have put an air suspension kit on the rear axle to be able to do that because you can't actually go up to 3850 unless you're on an Alco chassis. However, that's by the by. Um, now, mass in running order, and this has changed quite a bit. Um, it's really important this because you need to check your handbook and see what the mass in running, running order includes. First of all, it includes the vehicle itself, the en engine coolants and oil, fuel, 90% full, a spare wheel if fitted, a driver, which is nominally 75 kilos, and essential habitation equipment. That's really important. Bear in mind this MRO figure can be subject still to that same plus or minus 5% margin of error. And you need to note that some manufacturers have changed some of these to make it look like their vehicles have got more payload than they actually do. The essential habitation equipment, they should all be included in the manufacturer stated MRO figure, but some of them have removed the water out of this, which is a bit of a fudge in my point of, from my point of view. Um, the essential habitation equipment should include gas cylinders, your fresh water being 90% full, central heating system being full, a toilet flushing tank if you have one of those, empty uh, grey and waste water tanks, an electrical hookup cable and a leisure battery. Now, these all come into that mass and running order figure, but uh, some uh, people have removed 